Police say a southern Kentucky woman is dead after she was hit by a drunk driver. More on the suspect's charges coming up. A man is shot three times in Lexington, just days after police added extra patrols in the area to cut down on crime. It is pink out day here at the Kentucky Oaks. I'm Amber Philpott at Churchill Downs. Why it is so very important to put your best shade of pink forward. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Jennifer Palumbo reporting. She was on her way to church when she was killed. Police say the driver of the car that collided with the woman was drunk. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is in Pulaski County where he's been gathering details. It's our top story at 430. The crash actually happened Sunday, but the accused was arrested yesterday following her death after the accident. Now, 21-year-old James Harmon is now charged with murder. Sunday night, 67-year-old Sandra Drury was on her way to church in Science Hill when police say a car crossed the center line and struck hers head on. Drury and Harmon were both taken to UK where Drury died. Police say that Harmon fled the hospital when he learned that Drury had died. He was arrested at his home Thursday. He was arraigned today and pleaded not guilty. I'm just grateful she wasn't in any pain. The uh, flight nurse, uh, he said that she was very calm. The uh, chief of police said that she was very calm. They both said that they were amazed of the peace that was around her. And um, I'm just grateful she wasn't in any pain and she wasn't scared. Now, Drury's son and daughter are in town for their mother's funeral. They were also in the courtroom as the man charged in their mother's death answered to the charges. We're going to have a lot more from them coming up at 530. But for now, in Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Sandra Drury's funeral is at 2 o'clock tomorrow at the Morris and High Slope Funeral Home in Science Hill. An arrest has been made in Lexington's most recent shooting. It happened about 1.30 this morning behind the Whitaker Bank ballpark on North Broadway. The victim was found on a nearby porch on Paris Avenue. Anthony Crutcher is charged now with first-degree assault. WKYT's Mark Barber has the latest on his arrest in this Crime Tracker report. Just hours after police and the NAACP met at a town hall forum to discuss making the city a safer place, police say another person was shot. It's the 13th shooting in Lexington since April 7th, according to our records. In the past few weeks, a crime wave has swept the city. In two high-profile cases, police say a U.K. student and a pizza delivery driver were murdered during robberies. In this latest case, a man was shot three times outside an apartment building on Ballpark Drive off of North Broadway. Earlier this week, police told us they were increasing bike patrols in the area because there's been a rash of crimes there. Investigators say after the man was shot around 1.30 this morning, a witness helped him walk a few blocks to Paris Avenue, which is where they called for help. We're told the man was then rushed to the hospital, where he is now in serious condition. Police tell us he was able to tell them who shot him. Investigators say that led to the arrest of Anthony Crutcher. We spoke with someone who lives a few doors down from where the man was shot. While he didn't want to talk on camera, he did tell us that this is the type of violence that he's tried to shield his seven-month-old son from. We heard the gunshots, told everyone to lock the door, kind of just stay out of the way. Everyone in my complex has kids, you know, got to keep them safe. Police say they arrested Crutcher after he was brought into police headquarters for questioning. He's charged with first-degree assault. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Now, while there appears to be an uptick in crime right now, police tell us there has been a decrease in violent crimes this year in Lexington compared to last. Good Friday and Happy Oaks Day. <laughs> it is the first day of May, and many eyes are on the Bluegrass State for the Kentucky Derby weekend. Oh, beautiful, isn't it? It is. Nice weather is always a bonus, and it seems that Mother Nature is cooperating. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey for our Derby forecast. And Chris, a great Oaks Day. Yeah, fantastic. And I would imagine folks down at Churchill Downs, you know, the lucky ones, the chosen few out there, enjoying 
this splendid Friday afternoon. Little look outside for the rest of us. This is what we're left with in Lexington. It's not too bad out here, let's face it. Uh, we've got mostly sunny skies, a little bit of cloud cover, upper 60s to around 70 degrees. Winds are around 5 to 10 miles an hour. Nothing too gusty out there, but overall, very, very nice. Still, though, with a little cloud cover, southern, southeastern Kentucky. It's been like pulling teeth to get rid of a lot of those clouds. We've had more clouds keeping our temperatures down compared to everybody else. Now we look into parts of northern Kentucky. There's one more little band of some clouds beginning to filter on in to far northern Kentucky. So you'll still see some skies on that horizon this evening that have some cloud cover with temperatures dropping from the mid 60s into the mid 50s by around 11 o'clock or so. Your weather headlines. A great derby day. We've talked about this for a long time. Something else we've been harping on for a little bit, summertime. That is coming early. Guys, this pattern ahead of us is going to feel more like June, or dare we say the end of August and September coming up. We're talking about a wild setup across the country that puts Kentucky squarely in an above-normal weather pattern. Seven-day forecast coming your way in just a few minutes. Thanks, Chris, and what a beautiful day to be at the track. This weekend, the eyes of the world will be on Kentucky. Today, the Phillies will run for the Lilies and the Kentucky Oaks. Our Amber Phil Pot and Deanne Stevens are live at Churchill Downs, taking in all the fun at the track. Good afternoon, ladies. Hope you're enjoying this gorgeous weather. Sam, we absolutely are. How could you not enjoy this beautiful blue sky and all this sunshine? It is a gorgeous day. I told Amber, I said I should have brought my sunscreen, but I guess we don't need it with the hat, yeah, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> we're, we're covered, covered with the big yeah. hats out here today. It has been a beautiful day here at Oaks Day, and so many folks out enjoying it. Oh my goodness! And we're trying to fit in this shot here. Our hats are <laughs> rather large today. We kind of went big for sure this year. But today here at the track, it is Pink Out Day. It is a day that honors breast and ovarian cancer. Survivors, and it is a special time for a lot of different people. And it's become over the last seven years a day that it is a must for you to put on your pink and strut your stuff. Fashion is certainly key here at the Oaks. Having that right outfit is perfect, and pink is a must for both the guys and the gals. We're cowboys. We're, we are pink urban cowboys. <laughs> While the day is certainly one that brings a lot of fun, it is also a day to celebrate life and survival. Breast and ovarian cancer survivors are the real winners here today at the track. We have quite a few friends that have survived and have not survived breast cancer, so it is very special to us. Today's extra special. I get to do the walk. I'm a seven and a half year survivor, and um, I walk in honor of myself, honestly, but I also walk for my mom and a friend that passed away a year ago, Sharon Vaughn. Well, speaking of that walk, it happens right before the running of the Kentucky Oaks. So post is 549, so it happens before that. Coming up at 530, I'm going to introduce you to one Lexington wife and mother. She's going to take to the track. She is one of 141 survivors who will walk. And this is her third battle with ovarian cancer. So today is a day for her and all of those survivors to put cancer behind them and just enjoy a beautiful day at Such the track. Such a beautiful sight to mm -hmm. see when they take to yeah. the track. That's for sure, all the survivors. All right, coming up at for 50, we are making the $1,000 mint julep. Now, it's not exactly in this. Notice it's glass. Gone, right? <laughs> the glass is, yeah, it's empty for some reason. I don't see anything in there. Maybe a little mint left over. Uh, but that is coming up at 450, that $1,000 mint julep. So make sure you stay tuned for that. There's one thing I've learned about Deanne over the years. She's kind of the queen here of the Oaks and the Derby. She knows everybody. She gets the good gig. So I tell you what, we're having a lot of fun. There's I'll a share lot the next one of people. I'll right? you, sweetheart. A lot of people. We'll have a lot of fun here at Kentucky Oaks 141. Guys, back to you. All right, ladies, thank you very much. We'll be checking back in with you in just a little bit. We have an update now to a story we first brought you yesterday. We have learned that the demolition for a historic Lexington building has been delayed for now. Fayette County Property Valuation Administrator David O'Neill posted on Facebook late last night that he received word the People's Bank demolition on South Broadway has been postponed. He says in the post, Langley Properties, which owns the property, talked about the project yesterday with city leaders. It's a fight that's been years in the making. We'll preview tomorrow night's matchup between Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. That's coming up on WKYT News at 430.